Hello everyone. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to make a regular pentagon and then we will do the circumscribed circle and then I'm going to show you some uh, neat tricks with translations to take out one of those triangles outside of the regular shape. So on the screen, hopefully you're looking at GeoGebra. The screen, this is a screen that opens up for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the axes and I don't need the grid for this one. Um, so I'll leave that off uh, and then I'm going to take uh, the snap to grid even though you can't see the grid I'm going to snap that and then I'll slide my window over just a little bit to give me more room to work with okay now I think we're ready to go uh, first thing we're going to do is going to create a pentagon a regular pentagon all sides are the same size and all the angles are the same measure so to do that we'll go to the polygon regular polygon tool which is up here second option and to make a regular polygon we're just going to put down a point a random point and then however spacing I use here that'll determine how long each side is so I don't know I'll maybe click right about here and then it prompts me for how many vertices there are since I'm talking about a pentagon there'll be five vertices for this problem click OK and there you go as quickly as that we get ourselves a regular pentagon and I'll just do the selection tool, move these letters out of the way just a little bit. Okay, now we're ready for the next step. And obviously you just notice that if I click on B and drag it, I can make the regular pentagon larger or smaller. And that's about a good size for this lesson. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to try to find the center of the pentagon. And to do that, we'll have to create a circle to find the center of the circle. To find the circle in this problem, we'll go up to the circle tool and we're going to select the option that says circle using through three points. Circle through three points. So what that'll do is we'll select, we'll highlight three points on the pentagon and then GeoGebra will automatically create the circle. So one, two, three. And there you go, there's the circle that we need. Now to find the center of that circle, we don't want to do a random point here, we actually want the true center. You're gonna go up to uh, the point tool and one of the options is uh, midpoint or center. And in this problem, we want the center. So click and then click on the circumference of the circle and that'll give you the true center of the circle. Uh, in fact, I don't like the letter F, I like to change that and rename it to center and there we go all right our next step now to create the the regular pentagon is to find the radii so the radius goes from the center to the vertex and, and there's five of them in this problem because we're talking about a, a pentagon so I'll just go ahead and use the segment tool and just go ahead and make those segments and I will make these dashed just to separate it from the pentagon so the next one I do will also be dashed. And then there you go, making all of the radii. There's five of them, there we go. Okay, that takes care of the five triangles. You'll notice that there are five congruent triangles on the inside of the pentagon. So our next step would be to find the apothem because you need the apothem to figure out the area of one triangle. And then you would multiply the area of that one triangle times five because there's five triangles. So let's go ahead and do that now. And the way we're gonna do that is we're going to do the selection tool first, click in the white space, and we will highlight the center, and then we'll just pick one side. We'll pick uh, the one facing downward here. But first I have to go to the perpendicular line. I wanna make a perpendicular line that goes through the center and one of the sides. So I'll pick perpendicular line, highlight the center, highlight the side, and that'll give me a perpendicular line. Now I want to make a point where the perpendicular line touches the base. So I will go to the uh, point tool again. This time I want to intersect two objects, highlight the perpendicular line, highlight the base, and now we have that point. With that made, with that midpoint made, I can go ahead and highlight the perpendicular line, control G to hide the line. I don't need, I don't need the entire line. In fact, if you leave the line there, it gets a little cluttered. So now we can go ahead and use a segment tool and we'll make a nice clean apothem that goes from the center to the side of the um, 
pentagon. And I'll just change the color so it separates itself from the, uh, the radii. And there we go. So there we now have the five triangles. We've made the apothem. And now we're ready to go ahead and measure the angles. We know these angles are all going to be 72 degrees. Because if we take the center of the circle, right here, the center of the pentagon, I should say, it, it's circumscribed by a circle. 360 degrees are in a circle. We made five central angles. So five divided by, uh, 360 divided by five will give us the 72 degrees for each angle. So we'll go ahead and measure those using the angle measurement tool. Just measure the angle. Remember, GeoGebra works clockwise, so you got to go in a clockwise fashion to measure each one. Measure three, highlight three points for each angle in a clockwise fashion. And I'll go ahead and do each one of them. And, oops, there we go. Just have to be careful where you click. A couple more. Now this one I'm going to do the entire 72 here. Now that tells me, obviously you can see five 72 degree angles add up to 360. Now that bottom one, I don't really want that bottom one because that's where I need to split the angle in half. So I'm going to hide that by clicking, uh, highlighting that 72, right clicking, and then I'll show label, I'll uncheck it, and then I'll actually un, uh, hide the object. So I'm going to make that object disappear. The reason I want to do that is I, I want the smaller angle here, this bisected angle. So this is 72 degrees, but I only want half of that because that's what we're going to use. That's where we use a trigonometry to figure out the length of the apothem. So I'll just go ahead and measure that to make sure it's 32 degrees. And that's good. It is. And I'll measure the other one, which should also be 32 degrees. I'm sorry, 36 uh, degrees. 36 and 36 is 72. I did not go in a clockwise fashion, so let me try that again. There we go. Okay, and just to clean this up a little bit to make it more readable, I'll just drag the 72s out here a little bit. Like that. And then, so now it's a little easier to read, so you can see it. I also want to measure that right angle. I want to make sure this is perpendicular. So I'll go to the perpendicular for the uh, angle measurement tool, sorry. And then we will go ahead and measure that uh, right angle. And I'll put the box there for us. Then I'll just drag that 90 a little. Oops, didn't want to do that. Try that one more time. Oh, I know, I'm on the uh, angle measurement tool. There we go. There, that works. Okay, now I'll right click on top of the 90 and then I'll hide that so it doesn't show up. The box tells us it's 90 degrees. Okay, and there you go. There is your first pentagon. Um, and it's circumscribed by a circle. We can see that it makes five congruent triangles. And the only other thing I want to show you for this lesson is in one of my, in my lessons when I put them together, I actually separated the triangle from the pentagon just to show it to you separately. So let's do that here. I could try to create a random triangle that has a 36 degree angle, but instead of doing that, what I'll do is I'll use vectors that we learned about in the previous lesson, and I will just copy the triangle right outside of the pentagon. And the way we do that is we use the translate. So the translate feature. So go up to, uh, let's see, it's under, uh, let's see, here we go. It's under the uh, translate object by a vector. Translate objects by vector. And we're going to take one of those right triangles, the ones with the 36 degrees and 90 degrees, and then the other angle that we can figure out. We're going to we're going to transfer that outside of the pentagon just to highlight it a bit. So we will click on this option. And first I'll translate the center. I'll highlight the center. And now it wants me to create the vector, like how far out, left, right, up, down, do I want to move it. Right now there is no vector on the screen. So I will create a vector just by clicking and just drag away. Maybe I want to move it this much. And then what that'll do is that translated my center from the pentagon outside of the pentagon. And I'm going to do that with two other points. I'm going to do that with the A point. I'll highlight A. Now, I already have the vector, so I'm not going to create a new one. I'll just highlight the vector I have and look at that. It transferred it automatically. And then I'll do the same thing for F. I'll highlight the F and then click on the vector. Done. That is a triangle. That triangle is congruent to 
the triangle inside of the pentagon. And then there's, I'll create the triangle uh, just by using the polygon tool. Highlight all the points. And there we go. And just to confirm that it really is 36 degrees, 90 degrees, we'll use the angle measuring tool. And we will just measure this angle on the separated triangle. Looks like I missed one. Uh, I'll try that one more time. Angle. Oh, I had it on the wrong one. Okay, angle. Measure the angle. There we go, 36 degrees. And then I'll measure the bottom. That should be 90. And if I wanted to measure the other one, we would get the missing angle. Try that one more time. Hmm. I keep missing the angle. Let's try that one last time. Get it right this time. All right. Okay, and then we can just drag those those units of measure, just drag those outside a little bit so we can see them better. And sure enough, there it is. And I'll just hide that 90 because I don't, we have the box. So 36, 54, 90 right triangle. Uh, this triangle matches the smaller one inside the pentagon. And just to confirm it'll match, because we're using a vector to create it, I'm going to drag the B point and I'm going to make it, I'm going to stretch out the pentagon and look what happens to the triangle. See how it stays there? And it'll all it'll follow that triangle because of the vector. And if I don't if I think it's too close, I'll take my vector and just push it out a little bit more. If I don't like where it is that position, I'll take my vector and I'll drag it down a little bit, off the screen a little bit if I need to. That way I can work with both shapes. And finding the area of this uh, pentagon, you would have to know, let's say, one of the sides. Now we can figure out the apothem using trigonometry, and then uh, we can just multiply that answer by the five triangles inside, the inscribed. So there you go. There's your lesson on uh, regular pentagons inscribed in a circle.